Hello, and welcome back to Puerto Rico Life. My name is Jeff Holst, and today I have a guest, Mark Thornton, right over there. Hey, Mark. Thanks for being here. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Let me join. It's yeah, a, no, I'm not Puerto Rico, one of my favorite places. Yeah, no, it's super exciting. Actually, you know what? I think I might even add this um, broadcast directly to my Facebook. No, nah, I don't want people on Facebook to know yet. I'm being secretive. So for people who've been following me around, and I have, you know, dozens of followers now on Puerto Rico Life, not bad for a few weeks in, right? Um, in fact, I want to thank everyone for that, too, because we've hit uh, – we just hit 1,000 views this week. So that's that's pretty that's good, good for a channel good that's been around yeah. for two weeks. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so anyway, so the reason I wanted to bring Mark on today is Mark actually moved to the Philippines a few years ago now, right? Like about a year about and a half year, ago? Yeah, about a year and a half ago, yeah. Yeah, so Mark moves to the Philippines, um, never having been there before. No, and no, I no, yeah, I'm thinking about moving to Puerto Rico, and I felt like the only person I know that's ever done anything like just out of the blue like that uh, is you. So I wanted to talk to you about that. So I put up a backdrop from the beach in Puerto Rico. I think I took this one at the Cree Bay Hilton. And uh, I don't have you been to the Cree Bay Hilton, Mark? Probably, yeah. We used to go to different hotels when I, I worked on cruise ships. We'd go there many times to to Puerto Rico and certain hotels you could pay a little something for the day and use the pool and the facilities have lunch there. So we probably were there. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite places in all of San Juan, actually, it's super great uh, to hang out there. Um, but anyway, so Mark, um, you uh, let's start there. So you've, you've been to Puerto Rico, obviously. Yeah. Um, many times on ships. Yeah. Yeah. How long did you work on cruise ships? Off and on for like 30 years. But like, you know, I had different things that happened to me, got married, had kids, owned some businesses, and I always end up back on ships. Always yeah. like, it was like, this ma I wouldn't, I'd still be there today, but you know, they won't let me on there now because I'm too old and I had uh, quadruple bypass surgery. So Ooh. because of the requirements of an officer on a ship, you know, they, I couldn't get back on there with my age and stuff. But yeah, if they would have let me, I'd, I never would have left. I would have kept doing, I just love my job. I would have done it for free. I like my job so much. Do you ever? I mean, obviously the cruise ships are, <laughs> are shut down right now. Because of the yeah, COVID. yeah. But do you ever do you ever go on cruises, even though you can't be an officer, you can't work? There? I've I've never been on a ship as a passenger ever. Always as, as the officer staff. Always on okay. a cruise. Yeah, I've had my family on board where they were, you know, they were cruising and I was working. But uh, no, I've never done it. I don't even know if I would. Um, I'm just. I like being able to go wherever I want to go, like, you know, go down to the crew area, you know, and hang out with them. And there's a whole nother world on a cruise ship. There's like, you're seeing like two thirds of the ship. There's a whole nother area that's for crew only. And it's kind of cool to be down there. It's like, it's like working on the Starship Enterprise in our point in history where you go down to the crew bar and there's people from 30 different countries. And, you know, you hang out with people from all over the world. We all get along just great. Doesn't matter if you're, you know, what country you're from, what religion you're from, what, you know, your beliefs are, your gay, straight, whatever. Nobody cares when you're on a cruise ship. But it's like they actually have training where you go through where, you know, you don't discriminate against anybody for any reason. And so it's just amazing. Uh, there's never any fights or arguments. I mean, people just get along. And uh, it's like the world could do that. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's pretty sweet, actually. Uh I so I I've been on a, quite a few cruises as you know. In fact, we met on a cruise in Australia, uh, a South Pacific cruise, which was amazing. Um, but um, I've made a lot of friends on cruise ships, and occasionally I've been told like, "Hey, you know, if you tell me when you're going to be at what place at what time, I can get you like." you know, pass it so you can come to the crew bar and drink with me, right? Like there are like there are ways that they can do that. I've never heard of that. That's a that's a that's a firing offense. If you bring a passenger into a guest area, you get fired for that. Now it used to not be that way. I mean in the olden days, like you could pick up a guest and take her to your camp cabin. You could bring a guest to the crew parties and stuff like that. But nowadays they're very ever since 9-11 it all changed back then. But even to get a guest on board, even a family member, you have to fill out all these forms. The staff captain has to approve it. The captain has to sign off on it. And they get a special, you know, tag, you know, badge to wear while they're walking around the ship. But um, 
I think with that, you could. I think if you had that, if they had that tag, you and as long as you clear it with a staff cap, you might be able to take them down and show them where the crew bar is. But if you're down there drinking with passengers at a crew bar, I can't imagine anybody letting you do that. I, you know, I'd, I've had people tell me that they could get a pass for that. Uh, I didn't. Um, what, I, cruise uh, line? what cruise line was it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was. Um, that's a good question. Uh, it was probably Royal Caribbean. Um, I'm trying to remember right now. I don't often go on Royal Caribbean. I, I'm more of a carnival guy. Me but too. This was a person that worked for Park West, actually. Um, that told oh, me really? That. Yeah. Oh, no. He's not, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, I, used to, I, you know, I supervised all the auctioneers for, for Park West for a couple of years there. I was their, you know, I was the assistant sales director. I go from ship to ship to ship and put out fires, you know, because these guys like that were in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, before we get too far off topic, I do want to remind everyone we're going to talk about what it's like to move to a foreign land place that you're not familiar with in just a second but i was i don't know if you caught this mark i was not able to find the live stream we just did on your channel every man has a thor a story and and share this um were you able to find that and put it in the notes or the comments um hold on a second let me just check something you know, i wasn't gonna do anything with the comments but um just a second yeah, no, so I just thought I'd share that because I know that some people probably wanted to jump over here and might be looking for us, and um, and I, I don't want to, like, get too deep into our conversation. And no, it's, it's, it's on there. It's public. It's up right now. It's just I can't go into um, and add links and stuff right now while we're talking. No, but, yeah, uh, no worries. I, will, I, will yeah, I, it, I leave these videos up forever, you know, so as soon as we're done, whatever you send me, I, and also all your other stuff or your other channel, I'll put all that on there, too. I just copy and paste it on yeah. there. Well, anyway, I couldn't find it, so I apologize for that. So maybe somebody can put it in the comments if they see it. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, so 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 one person actually, Eric said there wasn't a link in the previous live stream, and that's why I was like, I was looking for the comment for it. Actually, Mark, why don't you do this? Since we're on here anyway, I'll just entertain everyone for a minute, and you can just jump off and put it on there if you want, and then come yeah, back. Are you gonna send it to me? Uh, yeah, I already did actually on Messenger. Oh, did? Okay, yeah. yeah, I can do that. Yeah. All right, guys. So Mark will be right back in just a second because people are looking for us. So, all right. Well, anyway, so I'm actually super excited to talk to Mark, and I realize we're just kind of you know free forming it here a little bit, but that's what we do. Um, super excited to talk to Mark about uh, about his experience of moving to the Philippines. Um, I realize that this channel is about Puerto Rico and about everything Puerto Rico, but I do think that taking uh, a chance and moving to a foreign land like the Philippines has a lot of similarities between what I'm proposing to do, which is to move to Puerto Rico. Now, there's a few differences. I mean, let's be honest. Mark's a real badass. I'm not. He's never even been to the Philippines, and he just hops on a plane with a one-way ticket and goes to the Philippines. I know this because we interviewed him previously on my show last life ever which if you haven't seen that um i can actually post a comment right here with the name of it i don't have the link right now so i guys i have to apologize for that i will share the link to last life ever um in the um the notes after we're done with the show or after we're done with this uh chat so oh once mark once you're done just you know flag it to me or something raise your hand it's say done. hi Done. It's there. All right. So yeah. now people can find us. That's All right. Good. Great. So anyway, Mark. So let yeah. me let's talk about this. So you've been to Puerto Rico many times. What's your favorite thing to do in Puerto Rico? Yep. Oh, we had a set thing because we were always there for a long time. Like we would get in there in the morning, like seven or eight, and we wouldn't sail sometimes till midnight or one o'clock in the morning. Sometimes we were overnight. And we would sail the next morning. So. Fortunately, with the job I had as art director, and I always had the whole day off. Whenever we were in port, I was off the entire day. So we get a group of people, usually entertainers, who had a lot of time off too. And first thing we would do, we'd go to the mall, and we'd see a movie. And once you saw a movie, then we'd go have lunch. Then we'd go to the beach. Then we'd go back to the ship and have a nap. Then we'd go back out to have dinner. And there's like, as you know, you cannot find a bad restaurant in San Juan. Oh. I mean, there's so many good restaurants there. And, uh, and once we had dinner, then we'd go to a, there was a club 
a bar. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's where all the crew would go. And we, it was like a crew bar off the ship in San Juan. And we'd all go there and hang out. And there'd be crew from other ships, too. There's usually was like three, four, five ships in at the same time. And so it's a really nice place to go and meet other crew members. So we would do that. Most ports had that. There was a place that the crew knew about, and we would always go there in many ports around the world, you know. Yeah. And so that was always fun. Well, and, and, I've, and I know that, too, just from knowing people on ships. They'll say, hey, you know, if you're going to be in this place, this is the place you want to go. And it, and it seems like every single island, every single port, there is a place that crew hangs out. Yeah. And then the crew has to be back like one hour before the passengers. We'd all go back and then we'd all go to the crew bar. Now on Carnival, what's so cool is the crew bars on the bow of the ship right below the bridge. Nice. We have two hot tubs, two hot tubs out there, a nice bar. It's like a lounge, really nice, comfortable bar with music and, you know, drinks and everything. And then so in lawn chairs, we could all sit out there and your view is the, the pier right there where everybody's coming back. And we'd all sit there and there, every time we were there, there was like maybe five or six guests that forgot about the time. They got really drunk and we'd be sitting there waiting. We're going to stay on like, you know, 10 minutes and you see somebody come along and they're, they're so drunk. Sometimes they're crawling on the ground and the captain would put a spotlight on them and we'd watch them slowly going. They stand up, they fall down, they stand up, they fall down. Are they going to make, because we're not waiting for nobody. If you're not back on board by a certain time, we're leaving. And Sometimes you pull out, and it's just as we're pulling out, you know, we're like maybe you know ten yards from the pier. You see some couple running with their shopping bags and everything. You know, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we say bye, see ya. <laughs> yeah, I I can't believe once they start moving, they're gonna stop, right? Like, there's no chance of that. Um, no. Yeah, stop. we know that for sure. But fortunately for that couple, probably the next port is going to be St. Thomas, and they can yeah. just hop a cheap flight over there and catch the boat the next morning, right? Yeah. What they do is they, if they're not on board, they leave their passport with the ship with a port agent, and so when they get there to the pier, the port agent's got their passport. But then it's up to them to to find their way to the ship. And sometimes it happens. A crew member. I remember I was when I was supervising art directors on all the crews on all the ships. We had a guy, brand new art director, just signed on the ship. And when he signed on, there was a sign by the crew gang. We always put down crew must be on board by, you know, whatever time it is. And so he assumed like we were in, uh, I think we were in Miami. He was assuming that we're always going to be leaving at five o'clock. And so he didn't realize that it changes depending on groups and things like that. And so he went ashore, like he was from another state. I mean, he wasn't from Florida. And he goes to the mall and buys all this stuff, you know, for his cabin, like sheets and pillows and all this stuff, things you don't really need. And he gets to the pier and the ship is gone, been gone for a long time because it really sails at like three o'clock and on that particular day. So he calls me up. He's all freaking out. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't have any money. You know, he doesn't have his passport. You know, he's, he's totally screwed. And I said, well, you know, the next port's going to be Nassau and you're going to have to find a way to get to Nassau. So, he calls his parents up. You know, he doesn't have a good relationship with them. They wire him money like Western Union. He goes to the airline, the airport, and explains the whole situation. Somehow they let him buy a ticket, even didn't have his passport with him. And so he has to sleep on a park bench that night. Next morning, he gets on the plane, flies to Nassau, and the ship didn't go to Nassau because of bad weather. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, terrible that boy never left the ship again once he got back on the ship he stayed on <laughs> yeah that's really bad yeah i i mean actually i mean that does happen right i've had a couple of oh, times yeah, where, all the time, where, yeah. where ships have changed itineraries because of weather or they just don't work because it's too, too much rain or too, we had too a long, long time ago when i was in, on rural biking back in the 80s we had a pass we were in russia st petersburg and this lady was in the pier, the St. Ber Petersburg Pier, at the coffee shop there. She's writing postcards to her family, watching the ship sail away. And they, the Russians realize that she's there. So they radio the ship. You know, you've got a passenger here. She can't stay here. you got to come get her, whatever. And so they put her on like a little uh, oil barge type boat, you know. And they sent her out to the ship. You know, we opened the side of the ship and brought her on board. And then they billed us $20,000. Wow. For getting, for getting her out to the ship. I don't know how they worked it out with her, but, you know, 
Yeah, don't miss a ship if you're working on if you're on a cruise. Yeah, uh, obviously. All right. Well, listen. The reason I wanted you on the channel here is to yeah. talk about your experience of moving to a um, to a foreign land. So let's talk brief. I mean, I know you and I have talked about this before. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk briefly about that. So, like, how did you make that decision? Like, wh what point did you go? I want to move to the Philippines. Well, I did. It's not that I didn't want to move to the Philippines. What happened was, is, uh, which I've talked about on my channel and your channel, is that at this point in my life, you know, a year and a half ago, my life was falling apart. Um, I had some business partners, my best friend at the time, um, that screwed me out of a deal that was going to be worth, you know, several million dollars. Um, I couldn't go on a ship anymore because of my health. I'd been selling cars at the Land Rover Jaguar, which I absolutely hated. And, um, Everything was just going wrong. I'd lost my house through a uh, bankruptcy. And I just didn't know what I was going to do. Like, here, I'm 60-something years old. You know, I don't know where to live. I'm staying with my mother. I have all of my, only, my only income is my Social Security. And I have bills to pay out of that. And so I got the idea. I said, well, you know, maybe I'll just go to Thailand. You can live there really cheap. I'll just go to Thailand. I never, I'd been to Thailand, to Phuket, but only on a ship like 20 years ago, this one time for the day. And so I started researching into that. And I came across a YouTube channel by a guy who's now a friend of mine, Enrique, who's been in the Philippines for a long time. And he started talking about how, what a friendly country it was. And the big thing was how they speak English here as a second language. As all the signs are in English, all the forms are in English. Mm -hmm. I said, well, maybe I should just try Philippines because on the ships, there's a lot of Filipinos working, lots of them. So I always, you know, work with them. They're always really nice people. And I said, okay, I'll just, you know, look in the Philippines. So anyway, I found a flight. I believe it was like $600 from Louisville to um, Cebu, which is uh, where I decided to go because I, I, I wanted to go to Negros Oriental because Rike on his video showed this apartment complex. It looked like something out of California. It looked exactly what I wanted to, to feel comfortable. And so I, I maxed out all my credit cards and I flew to uh, Cebu. And then uh, from there I came to Dumaguete and I got a taxi to an Airbnb called Pyramid House. It was real cheap. It was 12,000 pesos a month. Uh, and a peso right now is a, it's like 50 pesos to the dollar. You know, so it was like 200 bucks, something like that a month. Had free internet, <clears throat> no air conditioning. You had your own bathroom, but very basic, basic, you know, Airbnb. Almost, you know, one step up from a hostel. <clears throat> and so anyway, I get there, no transportation, I didn't even have, I couldn't even buy any food. So I, I brought beef jerky with me and I had, I'd made it myself. And so I'm eating beef jerky and drinking water for the first few days, just figuring out what to do. And I was going to teach Cambly online, you know, tutor English. That was my whole plan. I'd set it up before I came here. The problem was at the airport, my brand new computer, which I also put on credit cards, was on top of my luggage. It fell off. And when I get to my, my room there, I set it off to start teaching that first day. And make some money so I can survive, you know, the $10 an hour tutor in English. I open up my brand new computer, this very computer I'm, I'm talking to you now on, and uh, it don't work. It just won't even turn on. And I go, great, I broke my brand new computer. So I'm in a foreign country. I have no money but my credit cards. I have no job. I have no nothing. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I take my Swiss Army knife out <clears throat> and I take the computer apart. And I know nothing about, I'm not a handy guy in the fix stuff took it all apart and I put it back together and I pushed the button and it turned on. I couldn't believe it. So you and have so, no idea what you did. You just no idea what I, no idea what I did. Just, just, just did that. Okay. Just so, blind luck. All right. So you arrive in the Philippines with no money, with credit cards that are basically maxed, maxed out with, yeah. with, um, <laughs> you're making me feel like I can do this Puerto Rico thing, right? Like, let's yeah, just you be can, clear. Yeah, like, you I'm going, it. I don't think I can move to Puerto Rico. Maybe I don't have enough money. Like, maybe I'll be in trouble. But, like, I'm not in that situation, right? Like, I'm not. No. I mean, I'm a real estate investor, and I have some assets and, and a little bit of money. I'm not, not super rich, but I can afford it. You, Jeff, you can survive on the moon. Well, you I mean, maybe with a space I mean, listen, I've never met anyone that's been to the moon. You have, actually, if I remember this correctly. True, yeah. Two people. <laughs> two, two different people that have been to the moon. Yeah. Well, I met Neil Armstrong, like, you know, hi, I'm Mark, you know, shook his hand because he was a professor awesome. at the university. But I spent a lot of time with Buzz Aldrin. I had two weeks with him on a ship. That's crazy. Like, 
Um, and you, when you were with Buzz Aldrin, it was before he gave up alcohol, right? So it's during his his drinking phase. I don't remember him like being much of a drinker. He was just like a, a fun, entertaining guy, just mm. so nice. You know, asking he asked questions about you, like what what do you, how do you like work on a ship? How long have you been doing this? And did I stage manage his shows? And he would do like four lectures per seven day cruise. And uh, I say back then you slides. So he'd give me all these slides. I set up the slide projector, set up his microphone, the table, a, a stool, bottle of water, all that stuff. But before we would do the lecture, he'd come backstage. We did it in the movie theater. And so for the projection room is where I would be. And he would come there like 15 minutes early and him and I would just chat. And uh, I had, my dream was flying helicopters back then, trying to learn how to fly. I've been taking lessons on a Robson uh, R-22 Alpha in California years before. And uh, he's a helicopter pilot too, and so is his son. So we talked about helicopters for a while. And then after the um, the lecture, we'd usually go to like tea and have like they had the afternoon tea at four o'clock. We still have tea together and cookies. And then that night, you know, we'd sometimes go to dinner, sometimes have drinks. And he was just such a nice guy. I mean, he's like a normal person, you know, but I was really starstruck, you know, more than I've ever been with anybody in my life. I mean, just say, uh, God, he walked on the moon. I, I, yeah, I mean, well, listen, I mean, other than, other than Neil Armstrong, I don't know if there was anyone more famous at the time that he was on the moon. I mean, yeah. Uh, people don't always remember Buzz Aldrin now, but I mean, the second guy ever on the moon. Yeah. yeah. And, and only Sorry, yeah. Ever on the moon. I mean, they, yeah, they really, really. They actually, in reality, landed on the moon at the same time. I mean, yeah. it just got off the ladder first, right? Well, you know, and you think about the the um, the level of qualifications and skills of all the you know, how how skilled you have to be to say be a fighter pilot, to be a pilot in the Air Force or any, any military. I mean, to be the top, top, top guy where they they pick you know two guys and he's one of them that they chose. You know, he must have been like you know his resume must have been amazing. Oh yeah, unbelievable, <laughs> and he was he was way less educated than Armstrong. Um, I mean, he's not uneducated. I think he has a PhD or something, if I remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I mean, his, his education was different, and he wasn't a. He was, he was, if I remember correctly, civilian too, not military. Um, I don't remember that. Don't yeah, remember one, that. one of them, either Armstrong or him, one of them were civilian. But it, it's a fascinating story, actually. Um, you know, we were we were talking earlier on your channel about in, in your channel, Every Man Has a Story is great um, for people that haven't checked that out, by the way. We were talking earlier on your channel about road trips. One of the one of my favorite things to do is stop at these little uh, roadside um, museums and things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, there's a there's a stop right off of I-75 in Wapakoneta, Ohio, called the Armstrong Space Museum. And and this is this is like uh, Wapakoneta is where Neil Armstrong is from. Wapakoneta, Ohio, like north of Dayton, Ohio, south of Lima, Ohio. I think he yeah. lived in Cincinnati for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, um, anyway, so he uh, yeah, there's this great museum there, and it's like six or seven dollars to get in there, you know. And it's like an amazing place, spaceships and all kinds of memorabilia from uh, Armstrong's walk on the moon and stuff. It's, they even have a moon festival. Wow. I'll tell you a quick story about Neil. He was, um, this is back in the 70s, and he has a farm. And he was uh, up in the uh, hayloft of his farm, you know, moving bales of hay. And uh, he fell out of the hayloft, and his wedding ring caught a nail on the side of the barn and ripped his finger off. And so they flew him down to Louisville, where my, I was living at the time. And the trauma center down there was able to reattach his finger. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Wow, mm. uh, that's crazy. But anyway, yeah. So sorry. So you show up in the Philippines, no yeah. money. Now your plan to make money, ten dollars an hour, which does not seem like very much money to me. Uh, well, it's actually less than that because it's ten dollars an hour while you're actually talking to a student. And so with Cambly, what you're doing is you you log in and you you agree. They call priority hours. You agree that you're going to be online from say nine o'clock in the morning until noon. And so sure. you're. And you can just your computer's on and the calls come in. It's like a phone call, like just like our call, a Skype call comes in and it's a student from another country. And uh, you just talk with them and practice your English, just chat with them. And so, but if, if you're not talking to a student, if you're waiting for a call to come in, you're not getting paid. So <clears throat> it averages out to like $5 an hour, but still that was survival money. For them. And they pay right. you every week, by, they pay you every week by PayPal, no deductions. 
And so I was able to make, you know, $200 a week, which was more than I needed to survive, you know, in the Philippines. And so uh, I meant this, I did it for like, say, two or three weeks. I realized, okay, I'm going to be okay financially. And I started looking around. I went to look at this place that I'd seen on Rike's website called Dulce Vida. And it was really nice studio apartment, the pool and everything, had Wi-Fi, a furnished apartment with the linens and towels and everything you needed, you know, dishes. And it was like, what was it? It was, uh, what was it? It was like 16,000 pesos a month, which is like, you know, $300, something like that. So it was more, a lot more money than I was paying at the Airbnb. But I got, and I had to have three months too. I did first month, last month in deposit. So I scraped that together, moved in there. And the funny thing was, is like, once I moved into Dulce Vida, it's like every day, like we talked about it before being positive about things, but every day my life got better. I'd meet somebody else. I started making more money on Cambly and it just kept getting better and better, you know, and it's been that way ever since for a year and a half. And then about six months, it was back in July of 2019 or 2020, last year, I started the YouTube channel. And I posted my very first video, and that video got like half a million views. Whoa! And, your first and video got half a million yeah, views. Yeah, it's actually it's, it's actually more than that because it's still out there. But what I did, I made it on my old crappy cell phone with no microphone, no nothing, a five dollar um, tripod, and it got all these views, like half a million views, and it was real popular. And I said and later on, like I forget it was, like, I think it was back in October. I said I'm going to redo the video and make it better quality, so I deleted it and made a new one, and that one's got half a million views. So I'm really, it's over a million views for that whole story there, why I moved to the Philippines. Oh, huh, no kidding. That's interesting. Yeah. So yeah. I'm definitely, if I move to Puerto Rico, going to have to copy that strategy, right, and talk about why I moved to Puerto Rico. Yeah, um, yeah, people love to hear those stories. Yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. So, all right, so you, um, all right, so... I want to think about this. So, like, what did you do about work visas, or didn't you worry about? You don't need one because you're working online. Okay. I don't need one. It was like I set the whole thing up before I came here. Like, as far the good thing about Canada, I could go to Saudi Arabia, turn on my computer, and work. You know, I can work anywhere in the world. Like, I'm a digital nomad. Mm. Yeah. You can see, you can see on my YouTube channel. So what you're saying is. Um, it, when I'm going to Puerto Rico for a month, for people that follow along on the on yeah. the channel. Um, you know, I'm going to be there from May 17th to June 16th. You could come visit me in Puerto Rico and just keep doing your work if you want. You could teach. Yeah, you. I would love to. I would love to. I Are want to meet. Harry, I want to meet Harry Dent. Oh yeah, we should try to. I'm going to try to get him on here. I don't know. We'll we'll do, see. Do you, think, do you think he'd be a guest on my show? Uh, I mean, I can ask him for you. It's possible. Um, yeah. Harry's a um, he's an interesting guy. Like I know I don't I don't know how to read him. Like whether he's gonna you know whether he's gonna come on or not. Like it's. Uh, you know, he did both of my shows, right? He did Last Life Ever, and he did um, Old Fashioned Real Estate Show. Um, That's all this. Yeah, and I've, you know, I've, you know, I know Harry reasonably well. I've, I, in fact, when I was in Puerto Rico a few weeks ago, we went out for lunch. Oh man, talk about great restaurants! I forget the name of this place. Um, uh, I think it was called like Wilna or something like that. But it was like so good. I had the best swordfish that I've ever had in my life. Like it was wow. so good. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to find, weirdly hard to find like fresh fish in Puerto Rico. Um, there are like more of pork based culture. There's lots of pork dishes and beef yeah. dishes, but not too many fish dishes, at least not in San Juan. Um, actually he also recommended to me, um, the first, last time I was in Puerto Rico, he recommended to me to go to a Turkish place called Istanbul in old San Juan. Have you eaten there? No, I have not. I've heard of that. Yeah, that place. If you get back to, to San Juan, I would definitely check out Istanbul. That that's a great little re restaurant. Hmm. Yeah, I found so many good ones there. Like the crew kind of words of mouth, they all go different places, and then we share the information. But yeah, I found one one time. It was like behind a house, and they had like a garden in the back of their behind their house, and it was all beautifully set up with lights and tropical plants and flowers, and only like three tables and. We all sat down. The food was just amazing, and the wine, and, and it was cheap. It was cheap, you know. Yeah. No. Well, that that's one of the things I love about Old San Juan is there's like all these cool little places. Sort of like, yeah. um, I went to the um, cigar house in Old San Juan a few weeks ago, 
And I mean, you just walk in there, you, you get a cigar and a bourbon and you just kind of hang out and like, you just meet interesting people. And I mean, it's just a really, I mean, it's a really cool experience. And um, post COVID, I mean, it's going to be amazing, right? I mean, right now it's a little weird because they've got curfews and, and, you know, all, all the, the restrictions and, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't have those, but it's different now than it was two years ago and what it probably will be a year from now. What's, what's the real estate market like there? You know, I don't, I mean, I'm still learning about that. I'm going to do videos about it. Um, when I go to Puerto Rico uh, next month, one of the goals is to meet some realtors, get to know some neighborhoods. Um, but it looks to me like, uh, you know, San Juan is uh, a quarter of the price of living in South Beach in Miami and just as nice. Wow. I love South Beach. One of my favorite places. Yeah. I mean, you can stay like in, in Cadado uh, uh, or, you know, Isla Verde. Um you, you can get a place down there, a condo with a beach view for three, four hundred thousand uh, dollars. And, you know, right across the walk, walkway from the beach. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And these are beautiful beaches. I mean, uh, Isla Verdes, the beach is uh, it's almost a mile long, white sand beach. Wow. Wow. And so you're going to keep your house and uh, are you going to sell it or what are you going to do there? Not sure yet. I've got, um, uh, I just don't know. Like, I mean, I'm going on an exploration mission to decide if I want to move. If I decide to move, um, I'll probably sell the house because, you know, I'm all in. If I move, I think, I'm I think a month will give you a really good idea of what it's like to actually live there, you know, and how you feel about it. And uh, yeah, you'll, know, you'll know by then for sure. Yeah. How long did it take you to sort of settle into life in the Philippines? It took me a good two weeks. You know, the thing was, is once I left the Airbnb and moved into Dulce Vida, I started meeting people. Like there's, there's like, there's like 10 guys from like, you know, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Canada, uh, Russia, Germany. And uh, they're all like living there. And they, they had a, a, a cabana right by the pool and a big table. And every morning, a lot of guys just go out there and have their coffee. And so I just went out there and introduced myself. And so within, you know, a few days of moving in, I had all these friends, you know, and that's one thing I never had when I was in the States because I was always coming and going on cruise ships. I lived in a big neighborhood of like just middle class people, but nobody ever invited me over for a beer or coffee or a party or anything because I the single guy living in a house in a neighborhood of families. And so, and I was gone for months at a time. And so I had no friends, none. In Kentucky, I had zero friends. And all of a sudden I got friends my age. And it was just so refreshing to have guys to talk to and they, they knew all the ins and outs that we should go here and check this place out and what to pay for things. And it made it so much easier. And I, and now with my channel, I mean, I walk around and people come up to me. I went to a yeah. restaurant the other day and like five guys came up. Hey, what love your channel, watch your channel, you know, and, and meeting people left and right. And so I just know so many people now. I've never in my whole life had that experience where, you know, I'm well known and people want to come and meet me, you know, it's yeah, really not. It's it's different being on a ship, right? Because like people might yeah. be like if you're an art director, art auctioneer, whatever, people come and talk to you, and then you they're gone in in six days, right? And you never see them again. Well, to kind of yeah, that's true. They're gone. But uh, when I was on Carnival, for example, I don't think they do this anymore. But what they used to do the first night of the cruise, all the department heads would come up on stage, like the um, gift shop manager or the spa manager. You yeah, know, I remember or, that. Yeah. And we'd all do a little like, you know, a little like two minute talk. And what I would do is I'd go out there and I had raffle tickets. I'd put them in bundles with rubber bands, like 30 tickets in each one. And I'd say, you know, everybody at, at every single auction, I'm going to give away $10,000 in free art. And these raffle tickets are good for the whole cruise. I'd throw them out into the audience and they I all see. get crazy about them. But people knew me from day one. And so everywhere I went on the ship, they asked, you know, where's the bathroom? What time's the show? You know, you're an information source. And, uh, and I liked it, you know, everybody knew, you. but you also had to, you were never, um, you're always on stage. The minute you walked out of your cabin, you're on stage, you're representing, you know, Park West Russell, your cruise line. And so, you know, you gotta be dressed properly. You gotta act properly. You know, you know, you don't swear in public, things like that. Of course, the people that smoke can't smoke in public and, uh, you have to be very, um, you know, professional, you know, all the, and it can, it's a little stressful to, you know, always be on, even when you're on shore, if you run into guests all the time and you got to be professional then too.
So has that kind of happened to you now in the Philippines with people recognizing you everywhere? Do you feel like you're on stage? Like, is there a persona that you have to keep up? No, no, not at all. I'm just myself. But like I went to a restaurant for breakfast the other day and I had three guys come up to me. It's a small restaurant too. come up. You have walk, uh, watch your channels, you know, your videos and introducing themselves. And that's how I find other people to interview. And like one one guy um, about a month and a half ago, my girlfriend and I were at the mall. And we're walking in the parking lot where I park my motorbike. And this guy comes up to me and goes, hey, are you Mark from Every Man's Sort? Yes. Says, Love your channel. He said, but I don't know how to donate online. I, I have some people send me little donations through PayPal. And he says, I don't know how to work that online donation thing. He takes his wallet out, gives me 2,000 pesos, <laughs> which, is, which is $40. And I go, well, thank you very much. And I said, well, who are you? Tell me a little bit about you. He said, well, I'm, I'm a retired airline pilot, a vet, Vietnam veteran flight instructor, flew helicopters in Vietnam. I, yeah. go, I, want to interview, I want to interview you. And he goes, well, I'm real shy. I, don't know. I just kept pushing him. I said, look, I really want you on my show. And he's been a real hit. I've, had, I've done like five or six videos with him. Yeah, I've seen a couple of them. Um, he's yeah, he's an Cooper. interesting guy for sure. Yeah, yeah. It looks, like, looks like Clint Eastwood. Yeah, but, but yeah, so it's great, you know, meeting people. And it's always guys like my age. It's not like, you know, women or, you know, Filipinos. It's the people that watch my channel are guys like me. Yeah, it makes sense, right? So you're in a you're in a sort of there's a bunch of expat you know people that want to live cheaply in the Philippines um, for a variety of reasons, and, and it's, it makes sense that you'd see a lot of those people, and those are the type of people that would be most interested in your content because yeah. being your authentic self, right? Th those are the people that are going to be attracted to it, and yeah, and a lot of guys that are in other countries that watch my channel are living through me and other guys that do similar channels to mine vicariously they'll never come to the philippines and actually move here and they'll never make the leap but they can uh, watch our videos and like pretend what it would be like if they could move here and you know like i've got a beautiful girlfriend i'm getting married to and you know every my whole life has turned around uh, you know, 180 degrees since coming here and uh they think they can do the same thing but they never they're re never ready to pull the trigger on it they just think about it they talk about it but a lot of them will never have the guts to do it. But whereas with me, it has nothing to do with courage. I was backed up against the wall. I was suicidal, literally. And I and it was like this or death. And I just, fortunately for me, it all worked out. So, yeah, so what you're saying is, like, for you, the decision was easy because you had nothing to lose. Like, if it didn't work yeah. out, whatever, who cares? Like, you couldn't get any yeah. worse. Couldn't get any um, worse, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe you're saying it was it's easier for you to move to the Philippines than it is for me to move to Puerto Rico because my life is pretty good. Like, I'm, I don't mean to like brag up my life, but yeah. I mean I, I've had a lot of exciting adventures. As you know, we've done a bunch of interviews on your channel about things that yeah. I've done, um, and also you know I have a, a career, and you know I have I wouldn't say I'm famous, but I have you know I have some some following on social media and stuff on my other channels. And and I enjoy my life, like I and I don't want to. Yeah, it's a whole different circumstance, you know what you're doing. But you know, it's still, in, like you said, Puerto Rico is not another country, but in a way, it is because they speak Spanish there, both. Sure. Times. And uh, you know, it's there's different ways to move someplace. Like you're doing it, you've thought it all out, you've been there, you've got a plan, you've got a business, and all these things. So I think it's going to be fairly easy for you. The big question is going to be. Is it going to be what you think it's going to be once you actually get there and you're actually living there? Like you may find, well, I miss Tennessee, I miss America. You know, this is is it for me? And you know, decide to, to not sure. move there. But, well, and, um, and that's a big part of why I'm going for a month, right? So I can get a more feel for it. But I don't think I'll know. It might be a year or two years, yeah. and then I might be and like, you got oh, to learn the language. You have yeah. to. Yeah, no well, I do. Stuff. I want to and. What about you? Are you working on learning the local language for you? No, well, the thing is, like, there's really no point because in the Philippines, there's like seven dialects, mm -hmm. you know. And so on this island, on this part of the island, they speak Visaya. On the other part of the island, they speak Tagalog. My girlfriend can't understand Tagalog. She's lived here her whole life. So it's such a, you know, first of all, I don't have the brain to learn even Spanish or any language, but um, it would just be hopeless, you know. It wouldn't, it wouldn't really solve me any. You know, it wouldn't make life better for me. So yeah. I've been well, I mean, and that's fair. I mean, so for me, um, I'm trying to learn uh, Spanish because I want to 
feel the culture more. Like I really, oh, yeah. I feel like I want to be all in. Like I want to learn what it what it's like to live in Puerto Rico. I, I think you can get around old San Juan, San Juan, most of the places, and speak English. Oh um, yeah, sure. English is, English is is widely spoken in Puerto Rico. Um, not everyone speaks English, but. Uh, I've been to Puerto Rico five or six times now, and I don't speak any Spanish, and it hasn't been a problem. Now, I've been working on it. In fact, I, right before we came on uh, to your show, I was um, learning how to conjugate verbs. Very exciting, right? <laughs> like, well, a friend of mine that's, that's a polyglot who speaks like six or seven languages told me the, the first thing you want to do if you want to learn a language is to conjugate verbs. That's yeah. the most important thing. So but, that's, uh, that's what I've been working on. Spanish, Spanish, though, you can use it all over the world. You know, right. it's a really useful language where if I try and learn Visayas, I can only use it on this island, you know. Yeah. Well, and um, yeah, so actually kind of like what you do with, with English tutoring, I hired an online tutor on on this thing called italki. Um, oh. Yeah, italki, and, and I've got a, a Puerto Rican uh, a Spanish tutor, and he teaches me Spanish. I'm um, doing three lessons a week of Spanish, and then I'm doing homework on top of that to study and, like, try to learn as much as I can. Uh, and I think he's really an interesting app for people that uh, – and I'll, I'll put in the in the notes, like, a referral link so people can get a discount on italki. I think if you buy $10 in credits, you get $10 free or something like that. I'll, I'll put it in the comments when we're done. Um but I've really, I've really enjoyed that. I've only done about four lessons now, uh, but I feel like I'm making good progress. Uh, and I've never, been, yeah. yeah, I've never once been able to immersed. Before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But once you're immersed though in the culture, then people all around you are speaking Spanish. You'll start picking up little bits of conversations and understanding what they're talking about. And it'll just grow and grow every day. Yeah, and and that's actually so. I've been reading. I interviewed someone on Last Life Ever who speaks five languages. His name is Billy Keels, and he's he lives in uh, in Barcelona, so he speaks Spanish very well. He's he grew up um, in Ohio uh, and then traveled the world and learned all these languages, and now he lives in Span in in Spain with his with his children and his wife. He married a Spanish lady, and um, he told me that the secret for him was just watching like television and, and YouTube videos in the language that he wanted and not even having the subtitles, just forcing himself. Oh, really? to watch. Yeah. Huh. I had a friend of mine uh, who was from Romania and she learned fluent Spanish by watching um, Mexican soap operas broadcast in Romania, but with subtitles in Romanian. And yeah. She watched the soap opera and she picked up Spanish from that. Yeah, I mean, I guess um, Fidel Castro actually learned English by watching 1950s American television shows. I read that somewhere, too. So I think you definitely can learn a language that way. No, I think by immersing myself in the culture, by taking dedicated one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions, by actually studying, um, I should be able to pick up a language. I've never learned a language before other than English. I've never... I've You're never a smart guy. I think within a year you'll be, you know... Little. Yeah, so I, I put that on my little thing. I actually wrote two years. So that's, that's uh -huh. two years. Um, like if I can do two years uh, and I can speak, maybe not fluent, but, you know, relatively fluent conversational yeah. Spanish, I'll be really happy with that. Um, even if I move back to the U.S., um, you know, stateside and, and, and never move to Puerto Rico again, like it would be cool to be able to travel in South America and Spain. Yeah. Um, and you know, and I've done some of that travel already, obviously, but but I think it's better, you know, to feel the culture if you can get to well, that, that's a big thing about languages. Like, you know, I've been all over the world like you have, and like say you're in another country, say you're in Egypt, you know, you're in, in Greece, and there's all these things going around. If you don't speak the language and you don't read the language, it's almost like being deaf. You know, you're that you're there and you don't understand what's going on and you mm. you're missing a big chunk of the culture and the experience, you know? Well, and that is definitely a big issue if you're in place like Egypt, like you mentioned, where you don't even, you can't even read the letters, right? Like the, yeah. every, all the signs look like squiggly things. And, you know, one thing I did that was really helpful there is I learned the numbers, right? Because the, they're Arabic numerals. There's only 10 numbers you have to learn. If you learn the symbols for the different numbers, then yeah. you know what things cost. And that was right. enough to like help. And what I do when I, whenever I see Arabic um, 
numbers. And the way when I would see him is I would get off the plane and I would be driving, you know, riding in a cab or something. And I just watch the license plates and I just constantly translate the license plates in, into, into English numerals in my head uh, to try to refresh it. And so I would just become really good at that. And I feel like that strategy is really helpful. So like now um, when I see letters um, on paper, I try to translate them into Spanish letters, like, like, just like, I'm not necessarily translate them. But if I see the letter A written somewhere, I think to myself, okay, what is A in Spanish, right? And it's, oh, I go, ah, oh, you know, <laughs> and then the other thing is like trying to like learn little tricks, like songs, like, you know, like the alphabet song in Spanish or something. Right, right. Right? It's just about repetition and forming a mental framework. Because I think language, reading, uh, writing, it doesn't really matter. It's all about um, mental representations. Yeah. And if we can speak English, we can speak Spanish. It's just about forcing yourself to learn those representations. I think you only need like, say, 500 words to be considered fluent in any language. And you think if you're learning something every day and improving every day, years a long time, you know, 365 yeah. days, you could, you know, go leaps and bounds. Oh, yeah, a couple words a day and you're at 500 words, right? The biggest problem is, I think, like learning the contextual stuff, right? So so English is a very simple language in a lot of ways because we don't we don't conjugate verbs, right? You say I walk, you walk, uh, she walks, right? The conjugation is putting an S at the end. Um, in Spanish, depending on the verb, it has different endings. And, it just, you know, and I, and I don't know them all, but there's, you know, like um, – you know, different, different ways that's conjugating. And I'm, I'm working on those things. And, and, and actually I have a whole playlist on this channel, actually Puerto Rican life where I, I kind of go over what I'm learning in Spanish called Jeff learned Spanish. Uh, I just, well, I've only done two videos, but I'm just going to keep adding to it. As I learn Spanish, I feel that one of the ways that it will cement itself in my mind is I'll think about it. And then I'll think, okay, how would I tell this to someone who doesn't speak Spanish? And then that forces me to really drill down in understanding it. Mm. And, I, and then mm. I make a video talking about that, whatever mm. I, whatever little piece of Spanish I learned. Mm. Does your spike, your wife speak any other languages? Uh, no, no, she doesn't either. Um, she took a couple years of Spanish in high school. So she has a little bit of a foundation I don't have, but she's going to start uh, working on Spanish as well. Mm. That's great. So, yeah, so, um, all right. So let me ask you just a couple of other quick questions and then we got to wrap up because we've been on for 45 minutes already. Uh, yeah, and I appreciate everyone who's stuck around and I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and check out some of the other content I'm doing because there's so many really interesting things about Puerto Rico. I mean, you've got the culture stuff and the language stuff uh, and the history and the unique status as a Commonwealth territory Um you know, and the the sort of uh, the, the the unusual status that it has in relation to the United States, all that is very interesting. But then there's this whole other side. Um, you know, the tax implications, the the financial implications of living in Puerto Rico, the opportunities that are in Puerto Rico, the challenges of living in Puerto Rico, the costs of living. Like, there's all of this stuff that I'm trying to sort through and. Hopefully when I get to San Juan, I can do things like go to grocery stores and figure out like, is milk really more expensive in Puerto Rico than it is in Chattanooga? Right. Yeah, I think it is. I'd like it to. Is. Yeah. And, and I think that sort of stuff, I can just keep, you know, I, as I learn about it, I can share that on this channel. Um, and, and that's what the intent is. And then also, you know, sort of, you gave me the idea with your channel, every man has a story. Um, I love to meet people from the mainland that have moved to Puerto Rico and talk about their experience living in Puerto Rico. So that's going to be another element of the channel. Just yeah, that's a great idea because I'm sure there's many people thinking about moving there. and Just want information about what was your experience like? What were the obstacles yeah. that you had to overcome? Yeah, so I'm definitely going to do that kind of stuff. But anyway, so 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 that little commercial for my channel here in the middle, and I love it if people would subscribe for that reason. But um, so you've been now a year and a half in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. You obviously are doing really well. Your channel's doing well. And I think, you know, you're even making money on your channel now. And uh, and you're getting married. Um, yeah. You think that you'll stay in the Philippines for the rest of your life? 
I don't, I can't say that. I mean, I, in a perfect world, let's say I, I all of a sudden I was making a hundred grand a year, let's say, um, I would probably keep a place here and then I would also get a place in Utah and I would go back and forth, maybe, you know, two months here, two months there, back and forth, because I still, I really want to fly paramotors in Utah. Um, and I can interview people in America, just like I can interview people sure, here. Sure. And so I'm not restricted. Like these guys, they have channels that say, you know, and it's Philippines in there. They're, they're limited to people that are interested in what's going on in the Philippines or moving. So I made a mistake calling my channel Puerto Rican Life or Puerto Rico Life. Well, not really. You know, I think it'll get you, you, you know, you have to find a niche. You know, yeah, and, uh, so that was kind of so that was kind of my thing, right? Like I have other channels, as you know. I mean, yeah. I've got the real estate channel, and I love it, and we do great stuff over there. Um, and last life ever is just about living the best version of your life in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I think that's a, yeah you got yeah. that. You don't need anything yeah. else. Yeah, the Puerto Rico life is an extension of my philosophy on last life ever. That you know, you should live the all, best. All I would life. say to you, Jeff, I think I don't know if I told you this before, but. If you want your channels to grow, you got to put out uh, content, you know, a lot of content. Like, yeah, I put out two or three videos a week. You no, know, and that's what I'm doing on Puerto Rico yeah. Life is, yeah. you know, I've, I've had the channel for about 15 or 16 days, and I think this is like my uh, 10th video. So, I mean, I'm doing yeah. like one every yeah. other day or so. Yeah, just put stuff out there and ask people to share and subscribe. And also, do you, sh you always share the video on Facebook? That helps too. Yeah, so that's a little tricky on this one because – um, and I'm going to start doing that, but I actually haven't told my Facebook people that I'm thinking about moving to Puerto Rico yet. Why? Um, because I, um, I'm saving it. You know, I have a, I have a whole following on Facebook and I've got the last life ever stuff and I've told some people, um, but I want to, um, I want to, I want to, I want to make that, that statement to the last life ever group in the correct way. I don't okay. want to worry that it's going to impact our ability to do that show and stuff. Uh, I'm very close to making that decision. Um, I think in the next two or three weeks, I'll be becoming more about that. And then I'll start sharing it there as well. Yeah. I'm going to make a video called I'm leaving Valencia, you know, and that'll get a whole bunch of interest, you know, and it'll be like moving to my new, new place. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, in my very first video on this channel was don't tell my wife I'm moving to Puerto Rico. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> that one got they got a hundred and fifty views, like with no no subscribers. Right, people were like, "That's interesting." Yeah, yeah. yeah with the log, with the logarithm with uh, YouTube, right now the title is one of the most important things. You have to have a yeah. catchy title. Title's super important for sure. Yeah, and you tell them a little bit about it in the beginning what you're going to talk about, but then you don't get to the the meat of it until later on the video to get them to watch as long as possible. Yeah. Now, do you use chapters on yours? Because, like, I know a lot of people are doing chapters now. No, I do sometimes part one, part two. But I've actually, I'm going to stop doing that. Like, say with our videos, instead of doing Jeff one, two, and three, because then people say, "Oh, well, you know, this is number three, and I'm not, I haven't watched number one yet, so forget the whole thing." Right. Yeah. And the video is the time. So if you just give the video a cool title, you know, road trip, whatever, you know, real mm -hmm. estate, you know, they'll say, "Oh, I'll watch that one." And they'll like that. They'll watch another one. Plus. I put a uh, end screen on every video. So when our video is over it, at the end of the video, there's a little screen where they can choose another, they can click on that. It'll take it to another one of your videos. Yeah. That's, that's really smart. Yeah. That's um, yeah. And I do, we do that of course too on our yeah. stuff right now. I just use the best for viewer option where it'll just send them to another video on my channel. Unless I have a specific video I want to send them to. Yeah. I did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I but it's, but it's great, definitely, it's really I mean, your your channel is a lot of fun, and I mean, I've had a great time just sort of reminiscing about different things that I've done, and I keep thinking I'm going to run out of stories, and then we think of something else to talk about, so hopefully I'll be able to do a few more. Yeah, as many as possible, you know, but I think the road trip, I think you've got a lot more there, a lot more material there, as we just scratched the surface today. Yeah, oh, yeah, we definitely do. I have like at least seven or eight more road trips that we didn't even talk about, so we'll have to do... Um, road trips again or something you know we'll have to come up with what's, what's great with you jeff is like you're so you remember so many details and you can really you really paint a good picture like i can visualize the whole thing you like getting in the icy water and the, the tall native american oh, yeah. you know, don't, don't let me forget to send you that uh that that video of of um chisasibi actually I, i'll find it and send it to you yeah, i'm, I'm curious to see that yeah
Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that exciting, but it, it was very cold. Uh, well, listen, Mark, I really appreciate you coming on here. Um, I am very interested to see what happens next in your story. Uh, do you have, um, as we wrap up, any advice for me about the possibility of moving to Puerto Rico? Should I do it? Should I just say that's crazy? Like, what, what do you think? I think you should do it because it's like the good ideas – keep coming back you think about something and it keeps coming back to keep thinking about it, thinking about it. That's usually, in my opinion, that's your subconscious mind saying, you know, this is something you should follow through with. And so I think you should go there. You're doing all the right things, learning the language with your skills. And you're, it's really not much of a risk for a guy like you. I can always come back. Right. I mean, no, I don't, I mean, and the, yeah, the great part about Puerto Rico is, you know, the you know, about Puerto Rico is you don't need a visa, right? You don't need a, I mean, yeah. you know, there's no immigration. Like you're a U.S. citizen here or you're a yeah. U.S. citizen there. You but I think you're going to be there. That month is going to tell you a lot. I'm really interested to see how this goes and hope to get to talk to you while you're there. Oh, yeah. But, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll do I'll do your channel while I'm there, but I'll be yeah, also doing it. some lives. Uh, and, and hopefully I'll be able to interview some people while I'm there, um, do some streams and stuff like that. Uh, and just otherwise, just regular videos that I can post. We can actually do like a live stream with you walking around with a with your your phone and showing us different places. Like this is my favorite restaurant. Yeah. And, and walk so, here and well, the real problem with live streams is you can't do them until you have enough subscribers. Um, you can't do live streams from a phone. You can do them like this. We can do this live stream. Yeah, we can do it on my channel. Live stream on my. Yeah, channel. we can do a live stream on your channel. Yeah, for sure. Well, or I can actually use. Yeah. I think I might be able to use StreamYard, what we're using right now, and and like sort of circumvent the live stream and do it from my phone. Our, our video already, let me just go back here and check something out here. <clears throat> our video, I think, had 900 views already. Let's see here. Um, no, 720 views. Yeah, so, 770 is what it's showing for me. Yeah. 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 So, you know, that's that's a lot of people that watch, you know. And again, it's going to stay up, you know, so it'll always be on my channel. And I'll put your links and all that in here in a few minutes. So we've got all yeah, that. Yeah, no, and same, same here. I'm going to leave this up and, and put all of your links and stuff in. So if there's anything specific besides your channel you want me to link, I'll be happy to no, do that. This is well. channel. That's it. Great. All right. Well, listen, Mark, I really appreciate it. It's about 1030 here. Um, and it's 1030 in the morning for you, I guess. So um, yeah. I will uh, let you go enjoy your day and I'm going to wrap my day up. So thank you so much for everyone who stuck around and watched us for now 57 minutes, almost an entire hour. And there's a couple of people that I know have been here the whole time. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll have you back again, Mark, at some point and we'll just keep chatting. And, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm also going to have you back on, I think in the middle of May, I think we're having, yeah, middle of May, we scheduled it already. Yeah. Another one. And, um, and that, I believe that will be when I'm in Puerto Rico. So we'll be doing that one from Puerto Rico. So, And still my my dream on my bucket list is to go to Egypt with you. Maybe not this next oh, trip, but I would yes, love to go to Egypt with you. I, yeah, I want to do that. Um, because of the corona rules and the miscellaneous other stuff going on, I've pushed going and going to Puerto Rico. Uh, I pushed going to Egypt off probably to fall. But I think yeah. I'm probably going to do it this fall. Right. Yeah, I uh, I miss I miss Egypt. It's one of the most interesting places I've ever been. Um, I actually have in my mind to write several travel books at some point, which is probably why I remember all these details. Um, mm -hmm. And one of them I'd like to write is about um, my experiences in Egypt, because you know I've been to Egypt uh, five times, spread out over right. two decades, right? And wow. I've gone and stayed for various periods of time in Egypt, you know, for a month, one time in Egypt and, and multiple times for several weeks at a time. Uh, so I have a very deep knowledge of the transition and, and Egypt has gone through a lot of changes during the last 20 years. Oh, it has, yeah. We've had three, the Arab, Arab Spring thing changed everything. 
three government changes in you know in yeah. 20 years and 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 not to mention you know coronavirus and and um you know and 9 11 and and how that impacted their tourism and 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 all that kind of stuff right i mean it's such a uh an insane amount of changes since i i was first there in 2001 in the in the spring of 2001 just before 9 11 and i was there in october of 16 uh, a week before the Arab Spring. So, I mean, I have these these experiences where I spent time in Egypt at very unusual times. Yeah, I've never been there since the Arab Spring. I was there before that, but I think I've been there like four or five times and never seen anything but the museum and the pyramids. So I never had the time. I was always there for one afternoon, that's it. Yeah, so when we go to Egypt, we'll uh, we'll take you around. We'll introduce you to people. Uh, if you want to go, even if I can't make it, I can introduce you to people that can show you around, so. Sounds great. All right. Well, Mark, I appreciate it. We're at an hour, so I'm definitely going to let you go and respect your time. Thanks for giving me so much of your time. And Anytime, uh, Jeff. Anytime. I appreciate it so much. And uh, everyone else, thank you for sticking around, and we'll be back again at some point uh, sometime. Hopefully soon.